Hello everyone. I welcome all of you to Physics for All by Shilpi Bhullar. As you all know, we are doing video lecture series based on the topic vector analysis. So today we are going to discuss curl of a vector in Cartesian coordinates. In the previous video, we discussed physical significance of curl. And now there is need to understand curl in terms of Cartesian coordinates so that we can actually understand that how do we obtain the formula, the expression for curl of a vector that we did in a few videos before. So let's get started. Again, we will consider some vector field A which is spread over the region. So if you can see this uh, entire region, we have a vector field A which is spread over this entire region. And here we are going to consider some surface, some area in this region. And that area is represented by this rectangular shape figure ABCD. You can see we have considered some surface, some area in that vector field. And this area is actually oriented parallel to xy plane. See, everything is being drawn in xy plane. And this rectangular area, you can see the rectangular shape that you can see, it is also a two-dimensional shape. So it's a two-dimensional shape, so definitely it will be just covering the portion in xy plane. So whatever is happening now, it's happening in the xy plane. And that figure is lying on that xy plane. So we would say that it is parallel to the plane. And this z axis, this is obviously now it's perpendicular. So you can say that this z axis is actually the axis which is coming out of the screen of this page that you are seeing. So if we have to look for the direction of vector area, because we know whenever we talk of surface, surface is there in the plane there are two dimensions involved so we have and we always consider a third vector a unit vector n cap you must have remembered we always considered n cap and that is always perpendicular to the plane to the surface so here x y is the plane and a b c d is the surface on that plane so if we have to consider that unit vector which is perpendicular to this ABCD, then it has to be along Z axis. And we are considering this vector area DX, DY, K cap, which is along positive direction because we usually talk in terms of positive directions of X, Y, and Z axis. So that's why this DX, DY is the area of the surface. And then this K cap actually tells us the unit vector which is in the direction of Z axis. So instead of writing down N cap. N cap is a general unit vector which tells us that this particular unit vector is perpendicular to the surface that we have taken. But in case of Cartesian coordinates here, see the title says curl of a vector in Cartesian coordinates. We already know what two planes we are taking. We know that our figure is lying in xy plane. So the third one is z axis. So if we have to consider unit vector, so instead of writing n cap, we would write down the unit vector which is associated with z axis and that is k cap. Now this A is the vector field and obviously whenever we have to perform any functions, we want to perform differentiation, partial differentiation and if we have to use the del operator. So in that case, the vector field has to be continuous and differentiable. If it is not, then it is not possible to use all these terms or calculations. and we know that AX, AY, AZ are the components of vector field along the three coordinates. So in that case, we can write down this vector A as AX, I cap plus A by J cap plus AZ, K cap, which is the general representation of any vector. Here you can see we have considered a point P in the center of A, B, C, D. And this AX, AY and AZ are basically the values x, y and z components at this particular point P. Now we have to find the component of vector A along all the four sides because all we have are these four sides. When we consider surface, 
sometimes what we do we talk of surface and volume then in case of divergence which we discussed in terms of cartesian coordinates in that case we considered surface and then we said that this surface is enclosing some volume so in that particular region we drew a lot of volumes and then we picked a particular volume and then solved for that volume and for the volume we actually considered all the sides because that was a cuboid and we have to consider the front face back face right left top and bottom face here what we are doing we have considered a boundary basically which is enclosing some surface here we are talking of only xy plane and as we discussed in previous video that curl is associated with line integral and surface integral it's always about the boundary and the surface which is closed or enclosed by that boundary in case of divergence it is the surface and the volume it's the surface and the volume which is enclosed by the surface but in case of curl it's the boundary and the area which is enclosed by that boundary so here you can see the boundary very clearly and we want to evaluate the value of this vector field a along all these boundaries along all the sides a b c d right so we have to find the component of a along a b b c c d and d so let's find it along a b now this is the side and the point we know is p now you have to see this thing that p is the point and we know the values ax ay and az they are at p but we want to evaluate ab right we want to evaluate ab so now we have to write down the values but how would we write them that's the important thing to notice first thing that we will do is since ab you can see that the change is happening along the x axis for ab only the x axis x components are changing for the component first of all we are not talking of line integral that we'll do in the next step first we want to know the components of a along the four sides but we know the components at point p so what we will do is we know ax is the x component at p so for ab first we'll write down ax plus now just see one thing if we are at point p and we have to move towards ab if we have to move towards ab from p what are the changes happening See, we will land at some particular point on AB, but the distance that we are covering in going from P to AB is the y-axis. You can see that the change is actually happening along the y-axis because we are going down from point P to side AB. So, if that's the case, then we would say that this AX component would undergo change with respect to y now why it is you can see that we are at p we know the value of x component along p which is ax and we have already written that but we want to go to a ab we want to know the value of component along ab we have to go from p to ab and if we do that we actually have to move along the y axis so there would be change in ax with respect to y and plus since p is at the center of this whole figure abcd the distance covered would be how much it's dy by 2 this particular portion is dy by 2 so now let's write down this would be ax is already there plus curly ax with respect to y and then as we are moving along y axis and the distance moved how much y we have covered this 
whole figure you can see this whole side da is represented by dy and p is at the center so the distance from p to ab would be dy by 2 all right dy by 2 and also one more thing here you can see the arrows that we have considered we have considered the arrows a b like we are going from a to b then b to c then c to d and then b to a why we have considered this anti clockwise path this is by keeping in mind the right hand screw rule that we discussed right at the beginning of this topic there we studied the for right hand screw rule for the normal sense it has to be if if the third vector you can see if the direction of the resultant of two vectors is pointing in the perpendicular direction or outward direction then it actually follows the right hand screw rule so if you move the screw it will go upwards but in that case you have to move it anti clockwise only then the final resultant would be upwards so that's why we are considering here that since we are considering positive direction of z axis so that's why we have to use right hand screw rule and which says that the direction of the vector should be anti clockwise so that's why we have considered this but now you can see when we are coming from d to a here also in going from p to side ab we are actually moving in opposite direction of y axis see we are moving in opposite direction of y axis we are moving in negative direction of y axis i think it's easy to understand we are moving from d to a and this y axis is like this this is the positive direction of y axis that we have to move upwards but we are going downwards so we have to put in negative sign along with this dy by 2 so here i'm going to write minus dy by 2 so this is the thing this is bit crucial step and if you understand why we have written this then you are good to go because now for all the remaining three sides we will use the same formula that we have used so now let's write down for side bc now for bc path for the track bc we would consider the y component of vector field a so ay is the first thing that we would write ay plus now let's see what is happening here we have considered ay because we are actually moving along y axis now now whatever change is happening that is happening along y axis so we have to consider the y component of vector field so that's why ay now you see that here we are at point p and we have to move to this side bc now in going from p to bc we have to cover this distance which is along x axis and this side ab represents dx so half of it would be dx by 2 so now your ay is changing definitely it's changing but it's changing with respect to whom it's changing with respect to x you can see if we are moving from this point p to side bc we have to go along x axis here at this point y is not changing y is the same but whatever is our y component which is a y that will change along ax so we have to mention this curly a y upon curly x and then again we have to see that our x component is changing and this is p is lying in the center so the distance traveled is dx by 2 and since we are going along positive direction of x axis see we are going towards right from p to side bc we are actually moving towards right direction and right direction is always the positive direction of x axis so here it would be dx by 2 with a positive sign or you there is no need to mention the positive sign so this is clear now we have to write for the side bc uh, cd now look for side cd again 
we would consider the x component of vector field. Now we have to move upwards from point P to side CD. So the component that we have chosen is AX, but it is moving along y axis. See, when we have to move from P to side CD, we have to go along y axis. And then again, this particular distance would also be dy by 2. And now we are moving along positive direction of y axis because if you move upwards, that is said to be positive direction of y axis. So let's write down here we have ax again plus there would be change in ax with respect to y. As we are moving along y axis in going from P to CD. And then the distance which is actually covered is dy by 2. And since we are going towards positive direction of y axis, so now we are going to write plus dy by 2 or simply dy by 2. So now you can see this AB and CD, both these sides, they are almost similar, but just in case of AB, there is negative sign because in that case we were moving downwards. So, downward direction relates to negative direction of y-axis. So, that's why negative sign. So, now only one side is left. So, let's write for that also. Here, we have to move from P to side DA. Again, we would consider y component of vector field. And in going from P to DA, we have to move along x-axis. So, now you can see that this half distance is again dx by 2. And now you can see since we are moving towards left direction, to go from P to side DA, we have to go towards our left. And left direction, when we move along left side, that resembles negative direction of x axis. So here we would write down minus dx by 2. And since the component chosen is AY, so AY would be changing along x axis. Here we have Ay plus curly Ay by curly x because when we are moving, we are actually moving along x axis. But since we are moving towards negative direction of x axis, so here we would write minus dx by 2. You can see sides BC and DA, they are also almost similar, just one negative sign is there in DA because here we are moving along negative direction of x axis. So we have written all the components, components of A along all the four sides. Now is the time to find the line integral because ultimately we are dealing with boundary. We have not talked about the surface at all. We have not talked about this surface. We are only talking about sides, means boundaries, A, B, B, C, C, D and D, A. So now the task is to find line integral. All right, now for side A, B, we would write down the component that we have written for side AB multiplied with the side itself. So this AB actually represents side DX. You can see it is side DX. So we have to multiply the component along with the side DX. So this becomes AX plus curly AX upon curly Y minus dy by 2 multiplied by DX. Then for side BC, so you can see that side BC is actually dy. It is same dy. And the side CD is again dx. Okay. So BC is dy. So we have to multiply the component along BC with dy. So this is ay upon curly ay by curly x. dx by 2 multiplied by dy. Then for CD, CD is side DX. So again, just write down the component and multiply it with DX. Then for side DA, that is again DY. So we have to write down the component and then multiply it with DY. So here we have obtained the line integral along all the four sides. Now is the time to actually find the total integral. So that is simply by adding all these line integrals. 
again here one more important step that i just left was since side cd is basically representing negative direction of x axis and side da is also representing negative direction of y axis we have to multiply here with minus dx and here with minus dy and now we have to find the total line integral around the closed contour contour is also used for the boundary the curves that we draw the tracks okay so this is a closed contour that means closed boundary all we have to do now is just add them so now i'm going to add them and let's see what are we left with so simply i will multiply ax with dx and all these terms with dx and i will write them down this is what we have obtained now you can see here there are few terms which can get cancelled and they are this ax dx and minus ax dx then this ay dy with minus ay dy then you can see that this term curly ax upon curly y is coming twice and both times with negative sign but here we have dy dx by 2 so it's half half so these will get added these two will get added and these two will also get added because they are similar terms let's write down we now have curly ay by curly x dx dy minus curly ax by curly y dy dx so dx dy or dy dx means the same thing so we can write down curly a y by curly x minus curly a x by curly y and this is dx dy now you can see that the area that we considered was dx dy see this was the rectangular with side dx and dy so definitely its area is dx dy and this was just one representation because here see the vector field is spread over the entire region the entire space we cannot say that the vector function is spread over only some surface no it's not like that it's just that for our convenience we picked x y plane this is how we did so we picked x y plane but we have to do the same thing along y z plane along z x plane as well okay so here what we can do is since we know that curl is basically what it is the total summed up line integral per unit area this is the definition that we discussed in the previous video so if we divide this whole quantity that we have obtained by the area then we would get the z component of curl a so here i have to mention of curl a so thus we get curl a and here i have to mention that only the z component right now so that is curly a y by curly x minus curly a x by curly y thus if we want to find the x component of curl a along y z plane in the y z plane so that would be curl of a and here we would write x and then what do we have to do now if you are talking of x component then that is along y z plane that is in y z plane so here we have to use y and z instead of this x and y that we used but make sure that here that we have this curly a y but if we go from we actually go from x to y then y to z and then z to x this is the direction that we follow so if we are talking of x y which gives us z component then we have to talk of y z so if we have x y which gives us z component so for x component what should we have we should have y z 
so where there was x we should write y and where there was y we should write z so this is the thing that we should remember so here it becomes curly a z upon curly y minus curly a y upon curly z this is the mistake people often do it's the x y and then y z and z you have to follow this cyclic order we have to go along cyclic order because we are talking of vectors and we are talking of curl and curl involves cross product and we know that cross product is anti commutative right cross product is anti commutative so that's the reason that we cannot change the order had it been dot product then it would not have led to any major changes so this gives us the x component and in the same way we can write down the y component which is curl a and here we will mention y now this is going to be z x plane so you can see for y component we are going for z x plane and now where there was y you have to replace it with z and where there was z you have to replace it with x so you can see here here we have z so this should be y and y should be we are saying that where there is y there we have to replace it with z so this y should be replaced with z and where we have z that should be replaced with x so this z should be replaced with x so we get curly a x upon curly z minus curly a z upon curly x okay so in this way we have found all the curls along all the axes now is the time to find the final curl curl of a which would include all these three curls along x y and z axes and how can we find that we have to add them now since curl of any vector gives us a vector itself curl of a vector is again a vector quantity so the answer would also be a vector quantity so here we have to mention i eta cap i cap curl a x component plus j cap curl of a y component plus k cap curl of a z component and now i'm just going to substitute the values that we have obtained so that is we have obtained this also what we can do now is that have you seen this expression yes this is the expression that we wrote when we first introduced curl of a vector function when we first mathematically studied curl of a vector function we said that this is the expression for curl of vector function now we just can combine it like this obviously curl involves here you can see this is actually del cross a we are coming up to that we are actually about to write down del cross a because all gradient divergence and curl they involve del operator so obviously here also del operator should be there now we know del operator is what i cap or i cap curly by curly x plus j cap curly by curly y plus k cap curly by curly z and if we have cross product of this with ax i cap plus ay j cap plus az k cap then what do we get we actually get this thing why because because that's the thing that if you actually solve it here we have written it in terms of del cross a which we used to say that this is the expression for curl of any vector and if how do we solve curl because curl involves this cross product and for cross product we use determinants so if we express them as i cap j cap k cap and since cross product is order specific order dependent and anti commutative so
so whatever comes first would be placed first so del operator is coming first so we will put curly by curly x curly by curly y and curly by curly z first and then the components of vector a and if we solve them just by expanding the determinant we actually obtain this expression this expression that we just wrote and you can solve it also because we know for i cap this is this multiplied by this for j cap this is this multiplied by this and for k cap it's this multiplied by this so if we involve all these terms we actually end up with this particular term thus this is our final result now we know that this particular term this is the expression for curl of any vector and which we can also represent by this determinant form thus now it's totally justified the expression that we first only learned mathematically now we know how does it come how do we derive it because this is not a made up expression we actually derived it by following by considering the surface and by taking line integral along the boundaries and then after solving after adding all the integrals we ended up with this expression so now we know why do we represent curl of any vector with this expression that's all for today and now since we know how to deal with this curl and its expression we will discuss in the next video another most important theorem of vector analysis which is stokes theorem we are done with gauss divergence theorem because that involves the divergence and here in stokes theorem we would use curl curl of vector operator and we will make use of all these uh, expressions that we utilized in understanding curl in terms of cartesian coordinates that's all for today thank you Thank you.